Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials. I'm Gazroth, and today we're going to cover leaderboards. Now, I know I've covered leaderboards in the past. However, there's been quite a few updates since then. And just to make sure that we have the most updated information, we're going to do it one more time. All right, so just to go over what I have in the world so far, we're going to go into build mode and we're going to see we have a trigger that is set to player enter. We have a cube that is just here for looks. It's just so I know where the trigger is. I have an empty script with no variables. And I have a sound recorder gizmo that has no audio recording on it whatsoever. It's just an empty sound recorder. And all we're going to do with this guy is we're going to attach our leaderboard script. And that is it. However, in order to get this trigger to work, we do need to connect it. We're going to go into our leaderboard script. When world is started, we need to connect to our trigger. So under events, we're going to scroll all the way down to connections and we're going to grab connect to event. We're going to drop that in when world is started and we're going to delete the self object. So now we need to connect to the trigger object. So we're going to create a new variable. So variables, new variable. And we're just going to call this one trigger and we have to make sure it's of type object and we're going to hit confirm. Now we, all we have to do is grab and drag our blue trigger into the object trigger enter because we're going to connect to that specific event and to the local event of trigger enter. It looks like in a previous update, they fixed these. So that is awesome. And since we're only connecting to the one trigger, we can actually use, so let's go up to a player events. When trigger is entered by player. So when the player enters this trigger, we want to set the leaderboard. So we have to go to values, values, set world leaderboard score for player. We're going to drop that in. So we have set change me. So we're going to click on that. And I don't have any other leaderboards in the world. So we're going to go into our build menu and we're going to go to the systems tab. Go to leaderboards. And since we don't have any leaderboards, we're met with this so create leaderboard. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call this one raw data. Hit enter. Now we can change the sort order. And all this does is it'll change it from either the highest number on top or the lowest number on top. And we're going to keep it as descending. So that the highest number and it goes down. Hit create. It should pop up here and we can either delete it or edit that information and we can close out. So now we see that raw data is now populated in this dropdown. So we can select that. The player will be the player that enters the trigger and we will just set it at zero for now and force to false for now. However, we do still need to create the leaderboard gizmo. So we're going to go to build, go to gizmos, scroll down to world leaderboard. So we're going to select that and bring it in. And it looks like it is backwards. And we're just going to grab that and we're going to scale that up just so that we can use it here. And we're going to open this up. So in order to display leaderboard data on a gizmo, we need to change the leaderboard. So here we can change that to raw data. We can just change the name. So I'm just going to call this one raw data. We can change the number of entries from one to 10. We're going to leave it at five. We can change the UI anchor style from static, which is what you see here to billboard which is just going to follow the player. Now it will follow every player. So if say you were over there, it will appear to be facing you while it's appearing to face me, but we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it as static. And then we can change the panel UI mode from light mode to dark mode. And then entry display mode can be changed from the raw value to time and seconds. We're going to leave it on raw value for now. I'm going to start the world and I'm just going to walk into the trigger and it's going to update my information. It's going to show my picture, my name and how, what my value is. However, the way we have it set up, I could enter this trigger as many times as I want and it's never going to change. And the reason for that is let's go to our leaderboard script. We're setting it to zero and our force is set to false. So we want a way to increase this value. So we need to go over to variables and create a number value. I'm just going to call it num and we need to set it. So we're going to go to values set to, we're going to drop that above our set raw data. 
We're going to grab our number variable and drop that in the variable section. And then we need a plus sign. We need to add these, add two numbers together. So we're going to go to operators, basic operations, grab our plus sign. Oh, grab our plus sign, drop it into value, and grab num and drop it in A. Oh, we want to copy and paste it into A and grab our zero here, bring it up there and change it to one. So what this is going to do, it's going to take whatever value num is and add one to it and keep doing that every time the trigger enters. And we're just going to take num and drop it into value. And we'll leave force false for now. We're going to hit clear and we're going to play. Now, when I enter this trigger, it should be one. When I enter it again, it'll be two. However, if I were to leave, say leave the world, I got to stop it to simulate that and hit start and come back in and I enter this trigger, nothing happens. That's because regular variables reset to zero, regular number variables reset to zero. And I have to enter it a couple times. So now it should be two. And now it will update to three because it's a higher value. Now, if I were to tr say set force to true, meaning I always want whatever number this is to override the leaderboard and say I left, I came back. Now it should be zero again. And I enter this trigger, it's going to update because num was zero. We added one to it. So it's one. You might want a player's leaderboard score to keep increasing over many sessions so that way you know the player leaves they come back they can still progress in order to do that we need a player persistent variable previously i've created a video and i will link the the video for player persistent variables but in order to set one we will need to go to values and we need to set our player persistent variable we need we can get rid of this for now and we're going to set that to our enter value and we're going to set it to itself plus one just like we were doing previously for the player and in order to get it we're just going to get player persistent variable drop it into a same variable of enter for the player and we're just going to add one to it so just like how we were doing it with the number variable however this is with a player persistent variable and we're just going to add a one there and now we should be able to swap out number with get player persistent variable of enter. So now anytime the player enters the trigger, enter will increase by one, and then that information will be displayed on the leaderboard. So if I hit clear, pause, and start, we do want this to be false. And if I hit enter, or if I enter the trigger, now it's six because over testing with the last video and with this video, I have increased it that many times. And if I enter it again, it should be seven. However, there is another type of leaderboard that you can do. So we're going to go into our systems menu and create a new leaderboard. We're going to call this one time. Close out of that. We do need a new gizmo All right, bring it over here and we're just going to change a couple of things on this one this one will be set to time the title will be time and our entry display mode will be set to time in seconds so what that means is anytime we update this whatever value you get it it will set it to that time in seconds we'll get rid of our ppv and we'll grab our number again. So we're gonna set num to, let's say, oh, wrong one, say 150. And then we're going to set time to 150. And if I clear start and I enter this trigger now, this one should show two minutes and 30 seconds because 150 seconds is two and a half minutes. Unfortunately, we can only set a leaderboard 
We cannot get information back from them. That's all I have for leaderboards. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the video, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if uh, you liked the video, if you learned something, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified of all my future videos. Uh, if you have an idea for a future video, let me know in the comment section below as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one.